We had all those federal houses, all these people I didn't even know. I didn't recognize any of it. I, I didn't understand it. I d it seemed to me that that whole community idea of the elders and, and whatnot had all gone out the window. Now we were fighting over, can we have a Beano Palace and uh, the ice hockey rink. I mean, it, it, the whole value system seemed to have changed. Nobody went out jacking deers and, and hanging rats from the ceiling, the pelts to sell the pelts in the spring. All of that was gone. Well, Marty sort of rescued me because Marty took me aside and said, the Indian island that you came home to find does not exist anymore. And I go, I don't understand. And he goes, the, the components of it exist, but the community at large doesn't. Well, Marty's best friend is Fred Nicola, who's a basket maker since forever. Pretty soon what happened was, Marty being 20 years older than me, he pulled me back into a place that was very familiar with people who did things the way I remembered, who still held the same values and traditions and high esteem that, that I grew up with. And my grandmother said, well, why don't you make baskets with me? And I'll teach you the things that you didn't get to learn down there. But once that door was opened, Marty tried to resist it. He said, you don't want to be a basket maker. I said, you know, he said, there's so much work. You got to get gauges. You're going to have to get knives. You're going to have to get blocks. You got to get braided grass. I don't even know where to look for ash anymore. You know, and I would take things that I had here, like my jewelry, and go barter for the basket maker. Rosie loved my earrings, and I said, I'll give you some earrings if you give me some grass. And pretty soon I started gathering up the components. Well, my other grandmother, Doris, is also a basket maker, and she would come over and inspect the stuff and go, that stuff's too thick, that stuff's not good enough. Well, my grandfather and her were making baskets, so she invited Marty and I over one night to watch Grampy prepare ash and Marty, on the ride home, they had given me bags of stuff to bring home. And on the ride home, Marty said, I know how to do all that. And I go, so like, what's the big goddamn problem here if you know how to do it? And he goes, well, you see all that work and the rest. And I go, well, here's our choices. Either you get off your ass and help me, or I'll just like keep going to my grandparents and old people in the community <laughs> swapping off goodies for more goodies, you know. And, so he went and he got me my first stick of ash, and we never looked back. The secret of getting this ash pounded right is you gotta, you got to cover the whole thing. Yeah, you can miss it. You know, when I was a kid on this little island, you could hear that pounding every morning, all different places, you know, different households. And I used to live up on Oak Hill, and early in the morning you look down and you could hear that, that thump, thump, thump of those things, and you'd hear it up on Oak Hill when everybody was making baskets. We've been married since 1988. I never met a man who was as comfortable with himself as Marty is. You meet men who think they have to be something to impress you. You meet men who think that they have to be one of the boys. You meet men who think that them being man makes them so superior that you're supposed to be in awe when you're in their presence. But not Marty, he's just Marty. And he wears his nativeness like his skin, it's normal. He doesn't have to explain it or defend it. Born here on this island. 
One and no kill in my mother's bedroom. <laughs> yeah, all of us were, all except one. When I was a kid, I used to like to watch those guys pound that ash. And then right after the war, the boys coming home, they'd do this. They had a a group they call the 5220 Club. They could, they used to draw twenty dollars a week. They could do it for a year, you know, the veterans. <laughs> and they used to do this to make extra money. Geez, they were rugged. Yeah, I just a little kid. I'd watch them. Geez, they had muscles. They just, geez, they just roll. A couple of the good ones, the good pounders, they never come back. I mean, they got shot in the war. That's what they call the heart, and it's darker. And as, you, as you see the different baskets, you know, that, that's the darker basket too. There's the white and the, and the dark. I think that fate put us together for a reason because what Marty knows needed to be known by another generation. And Though I'm not a man, and that normally would be who he'd pass it on to, I'm definitely not going to forget what he's taught me, so it's, it's not like he's wasted the knowledge. That's the ash. 